and welcome back to Hacker 101. This is the second in a two-part series on common Android bugs, how to discover, exploit, and fix them. If you haven't already watched the first video, go ahead and check it out. Today, we're going to talk about a few bugs related to path traversal, embedded secrets, and some common OAuth issues. So let's get started. The first we're going to discuss is one you may be familiar with from web hacking. Many Android apps save files into their private data directory for some reason or another. When doing so, it will often use a file name sent by the server, potentially from a malicious hacker, to construct a path like the one on the example on the screen. The issue here is that if you can't control the path construction directly, it's trivial to override any file on the system. Consider what happens when you plug in dot dot slash some other file.txt. This kind of arbitrary write can be critical since you can, at least in theory, write anywhere that the app has permission. In the worst case, it can lead to direct remote code execution in the application. Thankfully, preventing this is quite simple and there are two different approaches you can take. The first approach is the safest where you don't use external input for path construction in any way. For instance, generating a new file name based on a hash of the file content. The second is to sanitize the incoming data before you generate the path. Removing slashes and backslashes just to be safe will prevent any traversal from the current directory. That said, make sure you think through the consequences of the app overriding anything in the target directory. If anything critical is present, an attacker will certainly figure that out. Whenever possible, try to go with the first option and simply say no to using externally supplied file names. Next, we're going to talk about a very closely related bug, zip path traversal. You're probably familiar with zip files, but you may not have spent too much time thinking about how they get unzipped. A zip file contains a table that is in essence a directory tree and a well formatted zip file will only contain paths like some slash directory slash file name dot txt. When something unzips files, it takes a destination directory and then adds on each of the zip file entries to figure out where to write the final file. Pretty straightforward. However, it's possible to construct a malicious zip file with a relative path like dot dot slash dot dot slash some directory slash file dot txt. If an application doesn't check for this while unzipping the content, it's possible that an attacker can override critical files, just like in the previous kind of path traversal attack. Evil Arc is a tool that makes building this kind of zip file trivial, so definitely check it out if you're interested in testing for these kinds of bugs. To prevent this, Ensure that any paths coming from zip files are properly validated before being used for path construction. The best thing you can do is to look for any instances of dot dot slash or dot dot backslash in the path and rejecting it outright. Attempting to sanitize it is probably going to fail in some way and only malicious zip files will contain those anyways. Now let's talk about embedded crypto secrets. These are cases where some cryptographic data is embedded in the application, such as symmetric keys, private keys, or HMAC keys. As you may have seen, it's trivial to dissemble and decompile an Android app unless the developers are very careful about what they're trying to use the secrets for and it's likely to be unsafe. However, just because a secret is present in an application, it doesn't mean that it's a problem. Rather, you need to work through the code and determine what it's actually being used for. If a hard-coded key is being used to send data over an insecure channel, for instance, that would certainly be a security issue because anyone who pulls out the key could decrypt it. Embedded secrets for third-party services are similar, where sometimes they're an issue and some other times are perfectly fine. When you see what it looks like a third-party secret, work out where and how it's being used, then go refer to any documentation you can find on that service. Once you have that, you can determine whether or not the secret is necessary for the application. Both of these require you to really put yourself in an attacker's shoes. You need to answer the following questions. If I was a malicious actor, what would I accomplish with the information I have? If you can access any kind of sensitive private data, that's obviously a security issue. If you gain nothing from it and it doesn't harm the developer or its users, then there is really no security impact, so it's not a security issue at all. That said, these are all gray areas and it comes down to your judgment. If you don't have enough information to make the call, err on the side of reporting it and letting the organization make the final risk assessment. From a developer perspective, think critically about every piece of data you're baking into your apps and remove it if you don't think it is absolutely necessary. For everything else, think about what would happen if you handed it to an attacker and work to restrict that as much as you can. Finally, let's talk about two common OAuth issues which affect Android apps, starting with implicit grants. With an implicit grant, the application will request an access token from the OAuth provider, which will be sent back as a part of the URL. 
This could lead to a whole bunch of potential token leak issues. If you see a response type equals token in an OAuth URL, that's an implicit grant and is always considered to be a bad idea. Thankfully, this makes them really easy to spot. Developers should never use implicit grants at this point. Rather, they should favor the authorization code flow where response underscore type equals code. You can also consider using a platform integrated authorization flow like Google sign in or Facebook login. These provide a rather foolproof approach where the burden of security is placed on the platform rather than the developer. The second issue is around redirect URIs. When a device makes an OAuth request, it sends a redirect URI which will typically point back to some intent on the application to handle finalizing the login. However, if it's possible for an attacker to control this redirect URI, they may be able to get it to go to some other intent in the app or even to another app entirely. If they're able to get this to go to a compromise or malicious intent, they will have full access to the authentication token, which also means access to user's account. If you see a redirect URI value that is not hard coded, it is very likely that you'll be able to control it in a dangerous way. For developers, you should always be using hard-coded redirect URI values and making sure that the target is locked down because the less you do in that target activity, the lower the likelihood of it being compromised in some way. And as with the last issue, consider using a platform integrated authentication to reduce your overall attack surface. Congratulations on making it this far. You now have an extensive knowledge of Android security issues. If you're interested in putting these into practice, check out the Google Play Security Reward program on HackerOne. This is a great place to find apps to hack on and continue to build on your skills. Since you've made it this far, consider liking this video and subscribing to our channel so you never miss a lesson. As always, thanks for watching and happy hacking.